On this week's Faz TV, we spent the morning with farmer and stand-up comedian Jim Smith to talk about mental health in agriculture. And we visited the SRUC Biomass Connect trial plots on the outskirts of Edinburgh. Mental health is really important, but often overlooked in the agricultural sector. Farming and crofting isn't just a job, it's a way of life and can present a unique set of challenges which can be out with our control. We visited well-known farmer and comedian Jim Smith to hear how finding your passion, getting off farm and talking to people can help to improve your mental health and well-being. Farmers love their farming. Okay, and a lot of farmers like working alone and things like that. And that's good when it's going great, you know, when you're getting good prices and good returns. But farming when it's when you're struggling to, you know, pay bills or even if you've got the best sheep or cattle, you know, or, or you can't afford to do a tractor repair or something like that, and it's restricting you from um, from doing what you really want to do to improve the business, that's when it gets really tricky. I would definitely encourage farmers to, to talk to others. It, it doesn't have to be, um, as you say, telling everyone your problems, but I think just, you know, um, if a rep or, or uh, an auctioneer or somebody pops in, you know, you know, I know you're busy, but just just offering to make them a cup of tea for 10 minutes as well, and just having to sit down in a blether. And it could be talking about anything, but I, I think just, um, yeah, I, I think I don't think folk realise how important that is, you know, because I, I, I've seen myself if I'm busy or harassed, and you see a car come to the road and you're like, oh God, that's the last thing I need, you know, because I think when you're in a dark place, maybe you don't want to talk to folk, but it's amazing just, um, I just anybody really, even the postman popping in, you know, <laughs> he's got a big wad of bills. Just chat to him for 10 minutes, you know, or five minutes. I mean, it, it does make a difference. My name's Jim Smith. I'm a livestock tenant farmer here in central Perthshire, uh, halfway between Blurgowrie and Dunkeld. Well, the farm tenancy is uh, 250 acres. I've been here since 1949 and uh, so third generation. We, we rent another 50 acres of hill land just two miles down the road. We were traditionally seed tatties, barley, uh, sheep and fattened cattle, and that all changed back in the 90s, came out of tatties, went more into suckler cows and breeding sheep. And then just last year we've given up the suckler cows and we're now just predominantly all sheep with a bit of crop, uh, a bit of spring barley really. And um, sheep breeds, uh, we buy them cheviots to, and run them in a blue face leaster tuck to make cheviot mules, keep them back, and then we buy in mules and texel crosses, and then we, we put everything back to texels, clins or uh, suffix, really. Just a Heinz 57 varieties, <laughs> if we can spit a lamb out, it's rear a lamb, that's what we want here. Well, like a lot of farmer sons or daughters, uh, Really, I was, I was greatly encouraged into it. I wasn't forced into it, but encouraged. And, and from the day I could drive a pedal tractor, I knew uh, farming was for me. So there was no doubt about it. I, I, only playing for football for Scotland would have stopped me, but uh, that, <laughs> that didn't work out. So I was always going to be farming. As I say, we grew up growing a lot of seed tatties, so it was all summer holidays spent rogan tatties, lifting tatties, dressing tatties in the winter. Uh, and then also livestock, going to summer shows, farm sales were always a highlight, so uh, aye, farming was always going to be my blood, you know. And although I enjoyed the uh, primary school, uh, high school was just a minor distraction to my tatty planting career, so uh, I just wanted to be sitting on a tractor. Um, didn't really stick in at school, I really should have, and I would recommend anyone to really stick in at school. It's only for a couple of years you really need to get your degree. But then I went to Crabston at Aberdeen at Agricultural College and it changed my life, it really did. It was fantastic and I had um, four of the best years of my life up there. It was brilliant, just mixing with like-minded people like myself and it gave me a great bunch of friends all around Scotland and gave me a lot of confidence as well. And of course I learned a lot about farming as well. And then, all, but also joined Young Farmers as well, which was just as equally important. Uh, really enjoyed going up, uh, spent a lot of time in Young Farmers, meeting meeting a lot of pals. So that was, um, that, Krebston and Young Farmers were two key things for me really, you know. I got into comedy firstly through, uh, as a young farmer, 
um, when we used to put on pantomimes and uh, concerts and things and I discovered that I had a, a passion for being on the stage and also uh, maybe a bit of a knack for writing comedy. Um, so and I wanted to develop that after I left Young Farmers and then um, I, I didn't know how to take it and then I, I just uh, I saw an advert for the beginners night in Gla at the Glasgow stand uh, where you get a five minute slot doing stand up so I thought I'll apply for that so that was 11 years ago and luckily they laughed <laughs> the first time and it's just went from there really snowballed I guess I, I love ma uh, making folk laugh on stage and I, I, lo I like trying to write gags you know it was, it was really through the pantomimes at Young Farmers if I'd write a gag and it got a big laugh, and uh, but yeah, the, the stand up, I, I, I just had a hankering to go on, and, and I thought, why not, you know? And if it hadn't worked out, well, fair enough. At least I tried it, but luckily it, it went well. I just, I just get a buzz out of it, I guess. When I first started, I, I, I used my rural roots as a kind of base, uh, playing on the village idiot kind of thing. God knows how they got that idea, and I tried to venture into more mainstream stuff when I started touring and that it was it was mainly kind of farmers and rural folk that came anyway so and farming's so easy to uh, write about and make fun of because there's so many cock-ups as you can see <laughs> uh, so yeah it's, it's just really easy to find comedy in it so and it, but what's nice for me is that i find a lot of um, city people come to my gigs because farming has such a big appeal now as you know you know it's it's on mainstream telly a lot so so but i i do try and explain it in a way that city people would get it because I, I that's where the mass market is and that's where I, I maybe want to go back and try and attract more of these people but keeping my my farming as a kind of base for my stories the things i enjoy about my stand-up uh, it, it's it's folk laughing and applause and, and and now and again you'll sometimes get a joke where folk are buckled over laughing you know not always but that that's what i enjoy i enjoy meeting folk that come to the gigs I, uh, but uh, yeah, I guess, I guess maybe a, a, I'm a bit of an attention seeker, I guess. <laughs> so stand up comedians are. I, I just like going um, and making folk laugh. And, and now, seriously, it's become a, a, a diversification, a farm diversification. And, you know, with, with 250 acres, it, it's, that's quite tight to make a living. So it has become that now. So that's also, it's also a job that I enjoy. I think mental health is, uh, it's really important we talk about it in farming. And I also think just throughout the years that there's not the folk on farms now, as you know. I mean, when we grew up, uh, yeah, there was some tough times as well, but there was always a, a buzz around the place with two workers, with my granddad, my dad, and mum worked on the farm as well. And, um, you know, there was always lorries in for tatties and things like that. There was always folk popping in. There was always a tatty dresser. There was always something going on. And nowadays, in the farm here, it can be really quiet. You know, and I, I don't like that so much. And I think just having, even if you had a couple of farm workers to work with, um, although not everyone likes that, but it's just somebody to talk to. You know, and I think that's what, uh, I think that's a big issue. Farmers, um although they don't realise at the time, they're not getting away to maybe talk to folk, they just have a blether. Now, farms are bigger now, there's not the neighbours over the fence to just have a, a blether to as well. And it doesn't need to be like pouring your heart out with all your problems, just a general hello, how are you getting on? You know, putting the world to rights for 10 minutes. There's not that uh, anymore really, or not not in a big way. But also getting off farm as well. I think, um, I think trying to get non-farming hobbies as well, you know, is, is a thing. Um, you know, my dad never had hobbies. He, he just loved his farming, and it was good when it was going great. But when it wasn't so good, you know, the, you know. So all, all he had was like the local discussion society and and like going to the market, which is good. It's great, you know, and that's folks' lives. But you know, he was never interested in football. He was didn't go curling. You know, you could do, you, there's so many things you could do around here: fishing, shooting, or, or, or just something to take your mind off it and meet maybe different folk as well. That, you know, farmers need to, but they grudge themselves time, you see, I think. Now I've got the kids, I guess, um, we try and make efforts, especially in the winter, to free up weekends once the stocks fade and get away off the farm with the kids. And um, we go swimming and we go shopping and um, go to the cinema and things like that. So, yeah, and, and, and I've actually, I don't know if it's a, an age thing, but I've, I've discovered hill walking 
is a great thing. Now, when I was in my twenties, I, I had no desire to walk up a Monroe. I thought, what a waste of time. But now I've been up a few, and honestly, it's it's the best thing ever. I, I would I would recommend folk to try and do that. I know it's difficult if you've got kids or that, but I would um, try and get away up a mountain for on yourself for a day. It's it's the best thing. RSABI are committed to supporting people in Scottish agriculture, and Jim is proud to be an ambassador encouraging farmers to keep talking to improve their mental health. It's lovely to be involved with them. They're, they're a fantastic charity and they've been serving farmers. Uh, um, RSCBI has been serving farmers for a lot of years now. And um, it's great. I get on great with Carol and Davy Leggett and all the folk that I know so well. I've grown up knowing them. So, And they're a fantastic cause. And I, I think um, it's good to see them talking a bit more about mental health now and depression and things like that because I think years ago folk just thought it was a, maybe a way of getting you know helping out financially a little bit but the, the far more to them than that you know and it's a kind of outreach post for, for folks so they're doing a great job and you know they've embraced social media and things like that so yeah I, I'm privileged to be a, an ambassador for them. As a farmer speaking to other farmers Jim has some advice which may help to improve your mental health. Well, try and find the cause of the problem. Why? You, because what's making you uh, down? If, because you could have a, the best farm business in the world going great, but you could still be down, you know. So um, I, I would advise you, uh, you know, even go and see a, a, your local JP, your doctor, uh, and um, get some real professional help as well. But yeah, try and open up to your, your mates. You know, that that's there's no shame in it. There really is. I, I think in this day and age that there's, you know, farmers are too proud. But I would say just try and, you know, you only need to confide in one person. And I know it's an old cliche, but a, a problem shared is a problem halved. And it's true. And, um, you know, if you've got a good friend that you can confide in, you know, just go out for a pint with him or her. You know, and, and just just try and get talking, you know. And, and if it's financial reasons on the farm or something, just try and get, you know, speak to the college or some advisors, try and just get, you know, see how you can get out of that, that kind of hole. You know, because it's not easy. I, I know uh, livestock prices and that are flying now, but input costs are high. And it, the amount of money it's taking just to generate a, a, a small income now is, is, is really difficult. And farming, you can't just shut off one day, you can't just shut, close the shop window. I think that's the real key. You can't just say, right, I'm away for two weeks holiday. We'll just shut everything down. And if you're milking cows or feeding cows or got a lamb coming up, you, you just can't do that. And I think I think that's difficult. But just I just try and get, get help. And, and I think the key is just try and pinpoint what's making you unhappy really, and take it from there. Jim describes his successful comedy career as his farm diversification, and he shares some useful advice to others who may be considering diversifying to create a new income stream. Well, the one key thing I would say about if you're looking to diversify, pick what you love, pick a hobby, and turn that into diversification, because that's what I did. and. You know, don't go and open a farm shop if you don't like dealing with people or do glamping if you don't like working with people. If you like taking folk onto your farm and you've got, you know, and you're a good bit for it, um, eh, go for it. But and, and look at case studies, speak to the college, you know, do your marketing. But I would say the number one thing is do what you, you really love because you'll need that for when it goes wrong. If it goes wrong, you need because you need to dig in then and say, no, I'm going to stick at it and you'll succeed. But So you've got, I would say, pick a hobby and make that in your diversification. Biomass crops, sometimes referred to as energy crops, are non-food plants cultivated for energy production. Biomass crops can be used to produce heat and electricity and transport fuels at low rates of carbon emissions. The Biomass Connect project provides independent information on biomass feedstock performance, agronomy, economics and environmental benefits to landowners and land managers. We visited one of the Biomass Connect sites near Edinburgh to find out more. I'm Jo Sweden, 
um, I'm a senior trials officer for SRUC and I'm also the project uh, manager for the Biomass Connect projects for SRUC. Biomass Connect is a group of field trials, so there's eight in the UK altogether. And what we do is we grow different types of biomass crops and we're going to compare them all at the end and see which is better and hopefully find best practice. Biomass is a non-food crop, so anything that you use for energy. So you grow things like willow and miscanthus which have a high energy um, potential to grow for energy. So you can use them as direct heat sources, so by burning them to create heat or uh, by burning them to create steam which powers uh, turbines to create electricity. Uh, there's also a method called pyrolysis um, which creates byproducts which can also be used for energy such as biocar and um, like a kind of pyrolysis oil. Uh, there's also anaerobic digestion um, which creates methane which is a very valuable gas especially in agriculture. So the good thing about biomass is that we're trying to adapt it so that we can grow it in land that isn't that can't be used for other things. So, for example, in East Ayrshire, uh, there's a project going on growing biomass around uh, disused mines, old mines that are kind of heavy metals in the soil uh, that nothing else would thrive on. Um, and hopefully, by growing biomass there, we're utilising land that we wouldn't be able to otherwise. Also, like in the highlands and stuff like that, and um, we could use biomass there where nothing else can be used. So Biomass Connect is trying to collect all the evidence and all the data um, to kind of promote uh, biomass production in, the, in Scotland, in the UK. So a farmer can, if he's got a patch of land that he doesn't know what to do with, perhaps he could make some money out of biomass on it. The good thing about the innovations coming through Biomass Connect is that we're trying to adapt existing machinery uh, to be able to deal with the harvest um, and also just have, be have the practice of biomass that can use standard machinery. So behind us we have the short rotation coppice willow. It's growing, there's five different varieties in there and we'll grow it for the first year and then we'll harvest it to make it coppice. So we'll cut it down and then we'll want it to coppice next year. And then when it comes to proper harvest, then we'll compare all the different varieties and see which one has grown better, which one puts out the, the best yield. Um, and also we're looking at disease resistance as well. We're also looking at like water content um, and how suitable it is as a biomass stock. So for example, like the hardwood for the black locust um, we're seeing how good that would be as a combustion material. Also miscanthus, we're looking at the, the content of that as well to see how different varieties compare to each other. So we have short rotation poplar. Again, that has six different varieties. And we have short rotation coppice poplar as well. So as well as comparing different types of crop, we're comparing different types of practice within that crop. So short rotation coppice and short rotation forestry are basically the same thing, they're just different lengths of cycles. So uh, short rotation coppice is three years and short rotation forestry is about five years, five to ten years. Using agricultural land to produce fuel crops over food can be a controversial subject, but Jo has a well-balanced view following her studies and current work on the project. So I actually did my Masters at Glasgow Uni um, in food security so I was always on the food side of agriculture. However, looking at fuel and the balance between the two, they're both as important as each other. You need food to produce fuel and you need fuel to produce food. But there will be results. Um, the project is to run for three years and we're hoping to get funding to um, expand that. But everything on the website just now is, um, is very informative. It's not just about the project, it's got other innovative projects listed as well. Um, it's got all the data, everything you need to know is on the Biomass Connect website. If there's one thing farmers should think about is the impact their practices are having on the environment and on climate change and how biomass can slot in there. If you would like to find out more about Biomass Connect, please visit the website 
www.biomassconnect.org. Thank you for watching this last crop update for Fast TV, the last of 2023. I'm Fiona Burnett from SRUC. December started with a nice cold, frosty spell, which was ideal in terms of getting onto ground and um, probably nipping some pest and disease problems in the bud. But unfortunately, it's been bordered on both sides by more very heavy rain and that's really impacted on crops. So we have some very wet and, and soggy soil conditions down the country, varying a bit by region, but worst around that kind of east coast um, for Ferraria, which is unfortunately one of our main cropping areas. So individual crops, we've had quite a lot of missed field operations um, because field work at best has been patchy. So missed limings, missed farmyard manure spreading, um, autumn herbicides missed and lightly spot sprays on rape um, quite often abandoned. Um, so quite a bit of catch up work to do. Individual crops, for the, for the winter veg crops, it's clearly been quite grim picking conditions. Um, we were a little worried about carrots where it was hard to get straw down onto wet fields and a concern about frosting, but by and large that's been managed well. Potatoes all lifted now, um, but some of those late lifts in very poor conditions as quite a bit of remedial soil work will be needed um, to kind of mend the, the damage. And then the winter cereals, I mean, remarkably, the early sown ones really don't look too bad. Um, there are missed patches, soggy corners, and decisions will need to be made in the spring. But there'll probably be a move to um, some more spring cropping. So there's a bit of concern about uh, spring barley, seed availability and cost. So if you are home saving, then get that tested for seed borne diseases and for germination so you know what you're starting with. Uh, ourselves, our, our spring thoughts are turning to the arable roadshows in January, um, where we'll be giving updates on the trials uh, and fresh information and, and evidence to support you going forward. So do look for details of those on the FAST website or on the AHDB website. Mm -hmm.